Hey everyone, it's Deb Blum, and today we're going to talk about convincing people versus just being able to share your perspective. So forever, I have believed that it's more important to me to convince people of my perspective. I was a, I'm a, I have a little bit of a fighter energy in me, and there's definitely, I like to debate. I spent, I would say years and years, decades of my life, I was a debater trying to convince people to believe what I believe and to think the way that I think and that I know the way. <laughs> and I have been coming into a new place and I don't know whether it's maturity because I am 50 now. I don't know whether it's maturity or whether it's um, self-awareness, humility, I'm not sure what it is, but I feel less interested in the fight. And I've been coming to see that perhaps what's more important to me is to, to just be understood and to understand another. To perhaps be shifted by the mere listening of another person and their perspective and their experience rather than being in a place where I'm trying to convince that person of something and that person trying to convince me of something and somehow we're going to not be okay unless we can win or come to a compromise. What if instead the real purpose is when we disagree to just come into the place of wishing to be understood and wishing to understand. And in fact, I think that most of the time, whoever is most aware in any given moment, ideally, though I realize this can breed resentment, so you have to be careful with it, but ideally would be the one that offers the listening first because not everyone is able to do it. Not everybody even wants to or is... Uh, a lot of people are in for the fight. And so the more that we can listen to a person and really be a deep, inquisitive, curious, non-judgmental, accepting, open person while listening to them, compassionate too, the more that we can sit there and listen to a person, then the more likely they are to want to and be open to hearing us. Because at the end of the day, what most of us just want to do is feel heard. And what happens when we debate is that we usually are so busy formulating our next response that we really aren't truly listening to the other person. And I'm of the mind that even though some people use the phrase hurt people, hurt people, or hurt, hurting people are more likely to hurt people, I do believe that, but I actually believe even more so that people who are unheard, that feel unheard, unseen, misunderstood, they are much more likely to hurt people because they have all kinds of um, resentment and frustration and build, built up sense of not being seen. And that is painful for human beings. And so I'm of the mind, the more that we can listen, the more that we can really deeply listen to one another and seek to understand rather than to convince, that is the magic for one of the ways that we're going to be able to, I hope, come together as a people and heal. Because I realize that a lot of people don't want to come together, like the ends of the, um, of the extremes, there are some distasteful behaviors happening. And so I get that people are feeling like they're, they don't really want to, uh, say, engage with people um, in, say, like, have those people living in their communities. But it doesn't mean we have to have people living in our communities. We just have to have people who are willing to listen and understand and get why these people feel the way they feel and try to understand better and allow space for that person to grapple with the possibility that there might be another way of looking at the world you know, offering invitations to consider new possible vantage points that they can, they can look from. I think there's always room for us to be able to um, propose or, or provide another perspective. But the minute that we get into trying to convince, what we're doing is telling the other person that they're not okay the way they are and that they have to change in order to be acceptable for us. 
And while that might be what you believe as far as who you're going to hang out with and who you want to be at a party or living with you, I believe there's a very big difference in um, trying to create that environment for people in order to allow more people to come into relationship with themselves, to feel heard, to feel like they're supported and cared for by other people in the world, even if they are, I like to use this phrase because I think it's a, um, a phrase that I, I use often around children, if, even if they seem unlovable. You know, I think that it, we, we talk about this in the parenting, parent coaching space, that the most unlovable children are the ones, the meaning, the ones that seem and act and have behaviors that seem most unlovable are almost always the ones that need the most love. It's the same with adults. It's the same with everybody. So the more that we can grant that love through our um, active listening, our open hearts, our compassion, our desire to understand another person, really believe that's going to change things and I really believe it in friendships as well because I really think that one of the challenges we have in friendships is that we're um, so often wanting people to be either like us have shared values and shared interest and and that kind of thing thing or or they're somehow we're or we become misaligned rather than connecting at the level of needs and feelings maybe even fears and hopes and we do that by listening to a person long enough to uncover beneath the ideas, beneath the identities, beneath the belief systems, beneath, beneath even the interests, the why. Why do they feel the way they feel? What fears, feelings, needs are underneath them? What wounding? And allowing the space for those things to emerge so that we can actually get to know one another at the level that we all kind of have our shared humanity. Because up here, we have like in our heads, we have frameworks and ideas and, and thoughts and ideologies. But underneath it, we have the flow, the flow of shared humanity. And those are needs and feelings, fears, hopes, dreams. Those, that's the space where we can connect. So it has to mean, I think, that we need to get beyond debate into more of a dialectic where the goal is to understand another and to have the ability to be shifted, opened, and changed by another. Now, do we have to have both people being able to do that? Probably in an ideal situation, in any relationship that's actually going to work for the long term, I believe both people would have to be open to that type of an arrangement but if you just meet somebody on the street and they have very different views than you and you want to provide a space for that person you absolutely can have a one-sided dialectic in that way in that you can just listen and be open and be open to the potential to be impacted moved shifted changed by that person and you never know a person might surprise you and be open to doing the same for you I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. So please do share more. Thanks.